What's happening, family? Welcome back to another episode of Let Us Tell It. I'm one of your hosts, Marcus Tanksley, a.k.a. Tank, and the other host is... Goose, How y'all doing? Already. Hey, if this is your first time tuning in, we greatly appreciate it. This is a podcast we do every single week, mostly. And we talk about pretty much all the world things, all everything, in and out, up and down. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talk about relationships. We talk about families. We talk about everything. And the reason yeah. it's called Let Us Tell It because it's coming from two black men, mm-hmm. two sane black men. You don't get that a whole lot on the social medias. Uh, we're a little different this week. I first want to apologize to our Patreon. They usually watch us film this live. Um, I don't know if it's got something to do with the whole nationwide. A little Amber alert, alert they sent out. A little alert that they sent out. I don't know. I tried for all the good 30, 40 minutes to yeah. go live with Patreon, and it just would not let me do it. So it feels a little empty right now. feels like we in here by ourselves it filming does, this live. Man. It's like the seats are empty. Ain't nobody out there. I be loving having the people watch. Man, so Patreon, apologize for that, but I did try. Uh and then, of course, this is we back after taking a week off. Uh, yeah, we, we usually kick us off with getting it off our chest. So that wasn't planned. There wasn't a planned, uh, was not a planned vacation. Nah. Uh, I'll go ahead and start it. Go ahead. Your boy had COVID. Mm. Me. COVID. Me. COVID did it up. COVID <laughs> did it up. Uh, uh, yeah, COVID I, uh, wash his hands. He don't be washing his hands. Man, man. Sh- I know you ain't talking. How many times <laughs> COVID been in y'all's house? <laughs> <laughs> From my knowledge, none. She is. Yeah. <laughs> Goose get COVID every six hours. Man. Uh no, nah, I um I was feeling sick. I started feeling sick to last Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Actually, right after we got finished filming TV TV, I was sitting in here actually at Kev's desk. Me and Angel was talking, going over some things, and I sneezed a couple times, and I'm like, dang, I feel weird. It's allergies this time of year. This, at this Time yeah. of day. I was like, that's weird. And she was like, I don't know. I said, man, whatever. So Tuesday night started feeling real bad. Mm. That's when I was uh I was just tired, just feeling bad. Mm. I said, dang. I said, I'm about to tell uh, Greg we can do it virtual or whatever, because I, I ain't feeling good. I don't want to be around him. I was like, but if we can just do later on on Wednesday, because we usually film this on Wednesday and I post on Friday. Yeah. Said so we could just film later on on Wednesday, I'd be good. Yeah. So I was told him, I was like, hey, text him, like, hey, hit me up when you get a chance. I was doing the kid drop off. Yeah. I was driving, doing kid drop off. Hit me up when you get a chance. <laughs> so he hit me up. He, was, he finally hit me up. Yeah. I said, man, I'm sh- I've been up all night, man. Baby uh, over here got a fever. She have a fever. I hit you up. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hit you up. Uh-huh. And I'm telling you, yeah, I've been up all night. Yeah. Because <laughs> my baby had an ear fever. Ear infection. Ear infection, yeah. And she would not go to sleep. So it might have been four, five in the morning. I'm talking about just walking around the house with her. Because when a baby has an ear infection, when they yeah, lay they down, lay, yeah. it's more pressure on their ears uh-huh. or whatever. So the entire night, I'm around the house just holding her, walking around the house. And I'm like, and I ain't even shaved my head neither. Yeah, that's what you so said. I was like, I ain't shaved. <laughs> I'm going to have to shave. I ain't going to make this. So yeah. I'll call him. And look, look how God works. Yeah, because I was like, gave look, him cold. I, I was up all night too. God gave him cold. <laughs> God gave me cold. <laughs> nah, that ain't who gave it. Uh, so we both was were like, terribly uh, tired. Yeah, we was like Thursday. We, I said later on today because I was like, he was like, oh, we could do it tomorrow. I said, let's just knock it out today once we both get some yeah, rest. Yeah, yeah. Because I was mostly just tired. I couldn't go to sleep like, the night before because I, I mean, I was drugged up. Night quill, everything could uh-huh. not fall asleep, just laying there tired. Yeah, and then the night, the next, uh, so I was like, let's at least do it today. So Thursday, we ain't got to worry about nothing. Yeah, that was my plan. And I laid down on the couch, and the whole time I'm thinking, because he was like, all right, once I get some rest, I'll hit you up, we could record. That's what we <laughs> left off. I yeah. said, well, just hit me up when you get good. He's like, all right. It got and around by eight o'clock at eight night. Eight o'clock, and I said, "I was the whole time I was thinking, oh, I hope this <laughs> don't call me." <laughs> I'm like, he said, "I go the whole day," and I'm like, "Hey, did I miss a call?" Nah, you said you was gonna hit me up. No, you was gonna you supposed to hit me up, and then I hit you up saying, "You all no, right?" I said, "You said you was gonna get some rest." 
Okay. And you was going to hit, it don't matter. One of us going to hit each other. We, apparently, that, that was a yep, miscommunication. Yep, that was it. I was supposed to hit you up. And, okay, yeah, because I remember I laying there thinking, I said, I I'm ready when me. you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did say I'm ready when you are. I was like, <laughs> but that was late in the day. I was like, shit. Uh, I was hoping he wouldn't say that he wouldn't call me. <laughs> That man was like, Shh, it was like, yeah, we'll do, do it tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> this is Thursday. We'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Thursday come, I'm good and sick. Boy. Sick, sick. And uh, did I take my test Wednesday or Thursday? I can't remember if I took it Wednesday or Thursday, but by then I would already decided we can just do it virtual. Mm. But the way I was feeling, nah. Let's just hope. Oh, yeah, I did because that's when I told yep. you. That's when I told you I uh, tested positive. Let me tell you what. I pull that little thing out, the uh, COVID test. Yeah. Swab, you know, that had the one where you swab your nose and you put the Q-tip in. Which one was that? Oh, that's the one. You put the Q-tip in the valve and you drip it mm-hmm. into the, the you know, all of that into the little test strip and it goes up. Yeah. I think you're supposed to put uh, four drips in that three. one. Is it three? I said, doot, doot, doot. And the things, you can see it wet starting to go up. Before it even reached that, the little positive line, <laughs> it wasn't even wet yet. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's a faulty test. You got test. that big code. Nah, I said, it's a faulty test. Let yeah. me get another one. <laughs> <laughs> the other one popped up faster than that Dang. one. The first one, I said, oh, I'm positive as hell over here. COVID, that bullshit. It's that bullshit, man. Uh, but yeah, so that's why we took off and I uh, tested. I started testing negative. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Oh, no, no, no. I had my last symptom Thursday night. I had my last symptoms. Mm. So Friday morning, I was fine. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, that was, I, I've been fine ever since. And then uh, Monday, Monday, I tested negative. Mm. Some of y'all probably heard about that. Yeah, because I was like, I ain't coming in this mother sucker at all if you uh, had any type of symptoms. Man, shut up. What's, your, what's on your mind? No. What you getting no, off I'm your chest? At, we on, usually hold start hold this hold off hold with kick, getting it off our chest. What you want to get off your chest? One, COVID, that is crazy and mm-hmm. how it's just becoming normal now. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, everybody's sick right now. Yeah, and everybody's sick. Everybody has some type of congestion, mm-hmm. something going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. No, the look on your face was real. You said. <laughs> My stomach grabbed. Anyway, uh, let me tell y'all about these contractors. I was one on one one back in the day, but <clears throat> I never hit people over the head as hard as these contractors are hitting people over the head now. Uh, we have a rental house in Atlanta, and the um, plumbing line got backed up. All right, cool. So I called my plumber. It's on Sunday, though. It's Sunday. And this is the house y'all own? Yes. Yeah, I'm just one to clear uh, uh, Yes, yeah, the house we own because um, you got to get some more streams of income. You feel me? So y'all trying to real estate, whatever, let me know. Uh, we do some syndications, get some group deals, get mm-hmm. this money somehow, some way. All right. Um, <clears throat> Plumbing line gets backed up. I call my plumber. He's out with his family. It's Sunday. Cool. Ain't no biggie. I call Roto-Rooter. All right? Roto-Rooter comes out. The guy, before even inspecting what's happening, he tells me, well, he did a little inspection. He pulls the service cap. The service cap sits out on the side of the house, and you can look down. The, the main drain line of the house. So when you run water. You snake two through, right? Yep, you yeah. snake two. You snake through there. He ran water, opened that cap, and he said he saw no water coming through the house. So there was a complete blockage. So my tenant could not use any water whatsoever. All right? So he charges me $800. $800 to pull up the toilet. And run the snake through the toilet side because if he if he would have ran it through the service port side, there's a backflow preventer. There's a flap that would have stopped the snake from getting into the house. This flap prevents any water from coming 
yeah. from the city into the house. Going the opposite direction. It's Going like the opposite check direction. Valve. Yeah. yeah, it's check valve, basically. And he said that's five hundred dollars. He could do it that way. But if he did, if he would have went that way, he might not have reached the blockage back into the house. So I'm like, cool. This is a serious situation, right? I paid the eight hundred dollars. Y'all, this job typically costs two hundred to <clears throat> two hundred to maybe four hundred dollars to do mm-hmm. on a regular day. Regular plumber, he done double, triple the price on your boy. He got me, all right. So then that eight hundred dollar dollars includes a guy to come out to scope the line to put the camera in the line. As soon as the guy comes out, hey, your 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 plumbing line is broken. And you have roots. That's what's that's what's causing the complete blockage. So I'm like, where's the pipe? He tells me the location of the break. I'm like, sir, I got that changed when I bought the house. There's no way this is broken. It's broken. This is what I'm this is what it is, basically. I have the film here with your tenant and with the other guy working here. You need to get this done. I recommend you get this done ASAP. So I'm like, how much is this? Uh, to excavate the line and to put a new line in, $6,500. i am like, hold up, man. I just, last year, I paid a plumber to come dig this up for $1,200, and he dug it up with a shovel. Mm-hmm. And you charging me $6,500? What the heck? What is, I was like, are you, you going to do that now? Like today, he's like, no, nah, we'll come back tomorrow. So I was like, oh, so you're going to come back on Monday on a working day and still charge me mm-hmm. $6,500. Obviously, I didn't do that. Then the excavation company came, the guys that extract the water, they came. It was a four-by-four four area where the water wet the carpet. They told me it was gonna, they were going to charge me 5000 to remove the padding and re- help dry out the carpet. So mm-hmm. we at five thousand sixty five. You at eleven thousand five hundred dollars plus the eight hundred. What's that? Nineteen, twenty, twenty, almost twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I was gonna say, don't have me mathing. Y'all, these <laughs> folk, these Rotor Rooter, Atlanta, uh, whatever service station that was. I think it was like Norcross. Rotor Rooter, call them out. Rotor Rooter. Man. Period. Straight garbage. Garbage. And oh, so my whole situation is my, my first situation. Well, how are you charging people this much money? How are you racking up the rates that damn high? Because it's an emergency. And yes. They're taking advantage of that. Taking advantage of that and saying it was an emergency. But my plumber came and was like, bro, there's no. Uh, Oh, t- tell them what you told them, though, when they said that it was broke. He was like, I just had that done. Oh, so I told him I just had it done. There's no way this pipe is broken. The guy was like, there's tree roots, tree, the roots broke the pipe. Uh, that's why there's a blockage. You need to get this finished. And I'm like, okay, leave, leave, the, leave it alone. Never mind. Y'all can leave or whatever. So the guy, he's he's already snaked the line. Mm-hmm. But remember now, he told me I have a complete blockage right. because the line is broken. Mm-hmm. Okay? I call my plumber the next day. He comes out. He he digs up the line because I told him what Rotor Rooter said. So he came prepared to replace the line. He digs up to. He's digs, the guy that replaced it to begin with. No, he's not. Oh, the guy he's that a different. Okay. He's, he's a new guy that I found. Gotcha. He digs up the line. And uh, because I have pictures of the first time it was repaired, so he knows exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. And then I told Rotor Rooter, I was like, show my tenant where this break is. So they put a whatever, a marker on the ground for it. So he digs up the line, and it's the line. You can see the uh, couplings on the Mm -hmm. whatever, on the tubes. He disconnects it, he picks it up. Him and my tenant take pictures down the line, was like, this line is clear. They over talking to each other through it, like <laughs> yeah, they looking through the tube like <laughs> at each other. This is this is clear. I ain't even think about this. I don't know why they did. That's the nastiest. I know. Line. Yeah. But anyway, 
Because <laughs> you uh, don't get no nasty. Yeah. <laughs> everything <laughs> everything, uh, everything that coming out that line. Uh, so then it dawned on me. I'm like, okay. If there was a complete blockage because there was a break in the line. In the beginning, when you told me there was a complete blockage, you made me feel like this was an emergency. So that's mm. why I paid you because it was an emergency. But in reality, you was just lying to me and telling me it was an emergency so I can go ahead and pay you that 800 Because if it wasn't an emergency, I would have just waited till Monday right. for my plumber to come out to fix the situation. So did he fix a blockage? What what did he do? And uh, was the backup was the backup just um, something like going on with my washer? Was the washer because right. they started washing clothes and it backed up? So I don't know if it was like there was an air pocket or something yeah. that made it back up. But from what this rotor rooter plumber is saying, man, there's no water coming out your drains at all. There's a blockage because the line was broken, but the line wasn't broken. Right. Y'all, we put that pipe back in there. My tenants have been washing clothes. They have been taking showers. They've been uh, dishwash everything. They did everything. They were like, it's it's fine. It sounded like something at the washer. Might have Ma- triggered yeah, something. Yeah, might have triggered something which caused it to flood out because in my in my opinion, the dude should have been going to run the water, the rotor rooter or whoever, run run water somewhere else. See how severe it is. Like, all right, that's backed up. Let me go to a different water source and run some water. If this backs up, I know we got a problem. This is what it is. I'm the I'm a landlord. Mm-hmm. He's oh, he's not here? Yep. Oh, he we can, can tell him anything. Yeah. That's what and I that's think. what he did. He told me anything <laughs> to get paid and straight asshole. I will never use rotor rooter. I don't care what yeah, it that's, is. That's dirty. I will never use them again. Never recommend them to anybody for anything. Y'all y'all talking about $20,000 for to remove a toilet to excavate a line that's probably 2 feet Maybe yeah, two feet that He deep. did it with a shovel. And he did it with a shovel. One day, shit, not even a day. It was a couple of hours. He was like, Mr. Gould, I done dug this line up. And ain't nothing wrong. But I'll put it back, put everything back together, you know, get you right, blase, blase. He was gone and off to the next job. And they was charging me $6,500 to do this. Then 5000 to dry the carpet out. Five thousand. Oh, tell about the, the dude that's gonna do the car. Oh, <laughs> so then I get on Thumbtack. I'm like, um, because my other, I kind of, I got a, like a little team in Atlanta. The other guy that was supposed to do the carpet for me, he was in another state doing some more work. So I got on Thumbtack, got a carpet cleaning company. The guy came out and he was like, "All right, for three hundred, three fifty, I can pull this entire room up." Put my fans underneath, dry it out, because it's not that bad. Dry it out, and then come back two days later and shampoo the carpet. I was like, sir, yes, go ahead and do that for me. So he came out. He pulled up the entire room, right, dried out everything, and did that for three fifty and and shampooed the carpet. <laughs> These guys were charging me $5,000. $5,000. Uh, What's the square hey, Oh. And the 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 chump, the man didn't even go to the property. He called me from the phone. Hey, uh, here you need us out there. I'm like, yes, sir. Uh, he was like, all right, yeah. So um, what's going on? And I'm like, what's, okay. I was like, sir, I'm not at the property. You probably want to talk to the rotor rooter guy. Y'all, I'm assuming you all would communicate with each other. Hey, man, you probably need to bring this, bring that, or whatever for this job because this is what it is. So anyway, I tell them, I'm like, man, it's not even uh, a four-by-four four area. The water from the, the the bathroom leaked out into the room. I just need the water removed. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we start out at $2,500 to, to extract the water. Um, but from what I'm hearing, they're talking from, about shop vacs. Shop vacs. That's, that's all exact, they're gonna use. And that's what I told. I said, sir, I have a shop vac at 
the part at the place if you need to use mine. I'm not sure if you have it on it's your truck or not. Water. <laughs> because <laughs> it's Sunday. I don't know if they got all their equipment or I don't know where yeah. you're coming from. Yeah, we got to extract the water, um, replace the baseboards, um, pull Rubber. up pull up the uh pads and and um yeah, so I I'm I'm gonna quote you five thousand. And I'm like, uh five I was like five thousand for for what? And he was like, Yeah, that's that's for our time today, that'll be five. I was like, Ah, thank you, sir. Click. Like, what? Who what I understand you got to you you have to get your money. You got your family to feed or whatever. Yeah. But how are you mar marking this stuff up a thousand percent? This guy charging three hundred four. Even if the guy that had that did the work charged me a thousand, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you still get me for four extra thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, man, that's ridiculous. I Roto Rooters in the trash. They right there with Spirit Airlines. <laughs> I hate both of them companies. Nah, that, that's, that's trash though. I had um, actually when Victory first moved out here to California, mm. she found an apartment. It's, uh, she was she subleasing from this young lady, and the girl said she could paint the apartment. Mm. So Victory wanted it brighter, so she said, "You know what? I'll just paint it, get everything painted white." So uh, our friend Brisha. Mm. has a painter that she has been using. He he painted he our last house, he came and painted the ceilings. I didn't really like his work. Mm. Um we I had a AC leak and got that fixed and the, the whole ceiling started peeling so had him come. I mean he was pretty reasonable. He didn't charge that much, but I didn't like his work because I could see the strokes uh, in the roller. I was yep. like this is not this don't look good. Before what he charged me, I was like I'm not going to be too mad about it, yep. but you know, everything's white again, but I Really didn't like it. The only thing I didn't like is he talked way too much. Mm. I mean, he would not shut the hell up. <laughs> this dude talk. I'm like, shut uh, the up and work. Yeah. Didn't like it. And then my boy Aleem ended up stopping by. Mm. You know, Aleem, I don't know if you've seen He got a 69 Camaro. No, I ain't seen it. Oh, one. it's a beast. Yeah. Oh, it's a it car. so beautiful. It's a monster. I call it the golden child. Uh, so he shows up. Okay. The dude sees that car. Oh my God. So he goes out there and starts talking to I'm already out there talking to Aleem. He starts talking to him. I said, Hey man, I, I need you to finish. Like the painter's doing the this. The painter. Not not plural, the painter. Yeah. So fast forward, um, we ended up this was like a year or two ago, a book before this next incident. So we get to our house. Um our house, we ended up getting our in, in Inti interior of our house, we get the entire thing painted. You saw it before mm -hmm. and after, right? Yep. I mean, the house was dark brown, mirrors. mirrors, colors were dark. It was just way too dark in the house. So we got the entire interior of the house painted. Fast forward a couple years later, Victory moves out here. She's got this apartment. Mm. So we still in contact with, and the, the painters that did the interior of my house kind of pissed me off a little bit. Uh, so I was like, I ain't using them again. But Brisha's got a painter, the dude we used. I'm like, I'll recommend him because I ain't got to talk to him no more. Yeah. And it's a cheap job for Victory <laughs> in her little one-bedroom apartment. Perfect. You yeah. know, let that happen. She calls me and says he's going to charge me, I think it was $6,000. For an apartment? One-bedroom apartment. She don't even want the kitchen done. She just wants the living room and the bedroom. Six thousand dollars. I said, "What?" She said, "So I'm gonna go with somebody else." I said, "I'm calling this dude." She was like, "Don't worry about it. I'm going somebody." I said, "No, no, no, no. He needs to. He needs to. He needs this yeah. energy. Yeah, he yeah. needs this energy. Yeah, six thousand so dollars." So I call him. Oh, and it's the way he talked to her because he said she said he said something like, "Well, you got to realize this is this is the big city. This ain't Kentucky." Mm. And then when she told me that, I was like, "Yeah, yeah. Let, let, give me his number." I call him. I'm like, yeah, you know, let let him know who I was or whatever. And then I was like, you, uh, I told him, you know, the job. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I let him know who I was. He's like, oh, yeah, I remember how's it going. I was like, yeah, it's good. I said, let's get back to this job over here that I'm supposed to be doing for my niece. I was like, you want to charge her $5,000 to paint the interior, paint the her uh, apartment? He's like, yeah, you know, I had to let her know, you know, this is, 
you know, it's a lot. I said, dude, what? I said, what kind of bullshit are you on right now? Yeah. What, what, what are you talking about? I'm only going off with my boss. I said, first of all, we we didn't call you to go through your boss. We called you to go through you. Yeah. I said, one, you ain't even looked at the apartment. Yeah. I said, you don't know if it's 11,000 square feet or 1,000 square feet. Mm-hmm. How you going to quote somebody on something and you ain't even looked at the job yet? I said, two, I just got the entire interior of my house painted for $11,000. It's Everything, literally, doors, baseboard, ceiling, mm-hmm. the entire house painted for eleven. And you mean to charge? Tell me you're gonna charge for a one bedroom apartment to paint two rooms five thousand? Yeah. I said, if you didn't want the job, why do you just say that? Well, I don't understand. Why do you just call the guys to paint your house? I said because I was trying to use somebody that we knew. Mm-hmm. I said, but now I see you can't be trusted. You'll never work for anybody I know again. Yeah. Hung up the phone. Yeah. Damn right. Raggedy ass. That pit, I'm like, what? I, I was a contractor. I did side jobs, all this. You know, I, I I've done it. Yeah. You can't. Well, you can because obviously they, they trying it. You know the people that are going to spend that type of money. If you're if you're going out doing this job for a, a big company, then you can right. s- do a surplus. But if you're going to a, a neighborhood, fr- a friend's house, you're not about to charge them a hundred thousand dollars to to renovate some baseboard. Right. Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? What? Yeah. <sighs> now it, it's a no. We had a friend, uh, a one of our friends. She has a she owns a house. Um, and she don't have nobody in it yet. Uh, but this is back in, I think she's in North Carolina, South Carolina. Mm. And she hit me up, and I ended up hitting up Goose because she was having uh, plumbing issues. They called her. She calls. Mm. They're having plumbing issues. And it was just like they were saying that uh, they she already paid them like two $300 to uh, do a repair. Mm-hmm. The city ended. That's what it was. The city called her and was like, "Ma'am, you have a leak at your house." Mm-hmm. Oh and we yeah, just let, yeah. That. We just letting you know you need to get a repair done. So she was like, "I'm gonna get somebody over there." They city. She was like, "Could you have them come out, shut off the water at least at the main, so till I get it done?" So she ends up calling. Let's say it's Rotor Rooter. <laughs> calling Rotor Rooter. Yeah, probably was them. Yeah. Uh, and they getting up going on. She said, "You know what? We got some. We ha- had uh, two lines to repair under the house." Mm. She's like, "All right, fine." City calls her again. Says, "Ma'am, you still got a leak. A leak under your house. This is like two, two, three months later." Ooh, all that still water. still got another leak. She calls them back out. Calls the same company. It's like, "Hey, y'all didn't fix the problem. They sent somebody out. Oh, we found we found more leaks." I said, "No." Mm-mm. No, she said. So should I pay them again? I said, don't pay them nothing. Nope. They need to fix what they. I said, they need to fix the problem, and they don't need to charge you nothing else. Mm-hmm. I said, here's the thing. Anytime somebody comes out, and I had to hit up Goose because it was a polyurethane line or something. Me and him had to put our heads mm-hmm. together on like the type of plumbing and stuff. So we, I'm sitting there telling her, and this goes for anybody out there too. Anytime there's a plumbing repair done on the supply side. Most common thing to do is pressurize the line to make sure it holds water. Yep. Basically, they put pressure on your water line to make sure if it's a leak, that pressure would diminish. Yep. The pressure will go down on the little needle. If it stays there solid, they usually do it for about 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Five, 10 minutes, they put pressure on it. They wipe, that needle don't move, you good. Obviously, they didn't do that. That's number one. Number two, City Call says the same amount of water that was used that, like, that first time is still being used. If there was multiple leaks and they fixed one, the price should have changed. Yeah. The uses of water. The usage of water should have changed, and it didn't. Yeah. We don't know. I said, so you need to call them and let them know they need to take pictures. Mm-hmm. Tell them you ain't paying them no more money, and they need to fix the original problem. So it ends up going all the way up to the owner, and I gave her like a little script to tell them. I said, ask them this, ask them, ask them about the water pressure, ask them about the type of line, ask them why they they didn't take pictures, and explain the situation about the usage from the city and what the city said, and explain to them that that usage should have changed if something was fixed to begin with. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll send somebody out, and uh, they and we'll send somebody out and fix it, and don't worry about the payment this time. You damn right. Because now they realize, okay, this ain't just a single woman out here yeah. doing something on her own. Yep. She knows somebody. So after that, I was like, until you get somebody in there, after they fix it, 
tell them uh, to have your brother, somebody, uncle, go out there and shut the water off to the house so you ain't got to worry about that. Anyway, that was a long ass get it off our chest. Man, because these suckers out here, they doing this bad. <laughs> they taking your butt money. This ain't. Hopefully y'all man. Got learned something out of that. <laughs> Look, anyway, act, uh, especially for uh, 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 young ladies, women, ask questions. Don't be afraid because I yeah, know it's intimidating. Afraid. You got men in mm-hmm. the house with you. You don't know them from a can of paint. Yeah. Do it like the doctor. Do hey, get second and yep. third opinions. Yep. Ask them everything. Let yeah. me see what why this isn't working and what is this for? Because they're going to get over yeah. on you easy. Make them explain it to where you understand it. Yeah. If you don't understand it, tell them keep explaining. Because it's not nothing. Uh, none of this stuff is that complicated. No. I don't care if it's electrical. I don't care if it's plumbing. HVAC is not that complicated. If they can't explain it to where you understand it, get another opinion. Oh, you can call me. I charge two dollars an hour. All right. Well, not two dollars an that. hour. Say two dollars a call. Two dollars a question. A How question? about that? A question. Yeah. And man, now man, I who's me. getting over on me? <laughs> <laughs> and like, hey, is this Goosby? Yeah, that's two dollars right there. You just asked me my name. Got you. <laughs> All right, I got a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, you got time? That's another two dollars. Yeah, I got $2, time. Got you. That's four now. <laughs> sat there with a the little clicker. <laughs> King. <Two dollars. laughs> Every time anyway. you ask me a question, I need that. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Man, your boy went to Catalina Island, and how did I get there? I jet skied there. Man, from Long Beach, and it was. It was an experience. I enjoyed myself. I won't do it again because to get there, it's like an hour, 15, hour and a half, uh-huh. maybe two hours. But we, we do we do several stops before you get there. But, man, in the, the, the beginning of it, in the morning, mm-hmm. the water was cool and the temperature um, was cool or whatever. Yeah. And they give you these wetsuits. I've never been in a wetsuit a wetsuit is amazing. It is. Getting into water in a wetsuit? Oh. Yeah. I go, it's dope. Man. I did it for the first time. We went to the Bahamas to yeah. get in the water with the dolphins. Ah. We put on wetsuits. Okay. I'm like, this is all right right here. <laughs> you don't feel the the water. You It, it keeps you warm. Yeah. It's it's cool. I like the wetsuits. I go to a swimming party, put on a wetsuit. <laughs> wetsuit, that thing. Uh, so... We get there, they give us the instructions, everything's on on the up and up. But when we get out there on that water, the jet skis are designed to go fast. They're not designed to go cruise. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. The jet ski, my top speed was like 52 or something like that. You're not supposed to go below like 44, to be honest with you. Every time I went, but uh, I stayed like at 35 or 40 maybe, the waves will catch you and toss you so high because you're hitting them and you just, Roo. I mean, you'll be dumping. you'll be flying, dumping. I had to look it up. So Catalina Island, for those, those of y'all that don't know, it's an island off the coast of California mm. and from Long Beach. It's almost 30 miles. It's 29.3 miles. Mm. On on water though, it ain't like driving. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and it, depending That's on nautical what, mile. There you yeah. go. <laughs> uh, so that happened to me probably the first five minutes of the trip. Your boy had, if you looked at my Instagram, I had glasses on, and I had this little uh, head, this ski mask on. Well, the glasses was that part of the wetsuit? No, no, no. I the, just oh, I just bought that. You wearing cotton out there, just uh, wet. Wet. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I bought it because the bump on my oh, head. Yeah. I had to keep my band aid on. I'm like, listen. A little top hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For y'all don't know, I got a little bump on my head. I think it's an ingrown hair. I'm going yeah. to the dermatologist tomorrow. Anyway, first five minutes. Wham! Mm. Your boy busted his mouth. Oh, I was, real? oh, man. I was like, I knocked my tooth out. Like, <laughs> 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 hey. The glass is like the the part that sits on your nose, man. That thing was shoved so far Ooh, up in man. my eye. I'm like, and everybody, you're you're out there with a team of people, but they tell you you have to be spread it apart. So the next person, the closest person, may be thirty yards away from me. Yeah, 
all around. So yeah. I'm just like, oh, man, I'm taking everything yeah. off. I, uh, your phone uh, is in this sealed, this water case. So I. On the jet ski? On the jet yeah, ski. Yeah, yeah. I don't pull, I don't stop completely in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> I, I don't pull my phone out like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, I'm bleeding all up in my mouth. Ah, they got me. God It'd damn be it. real out there hey, in the ocean, man. After that, your bus stayed above 45. I'm in front of everybody, and I'm passing everybody. <laughs> and you're talking to yourself while you're doing oh, yeah. it. Because it's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, here yeah. come another way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm> go. <gone. laughs> It'd be real out there. Hey. Yo, I started acting like I was on a horse. Yeah, 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 come on, yeah, yeah. Two hours of that. <laughs> two hours of that. The whole time, the whole time, my fingers are getting scraped up by the handles because I'm holding so mm, tight. I got the these scars. Yeah, got the scars on my hands. Holding it tight as hell. Yeah, blisters from yep. rubbing. Rubbing just. If you're a boxer, if you ever had boxing class. How your skin yeah. barely comes off from mm -hmm. hitting the punching bag. That's what happened on my thumb. You should have had on some cowboy. Yeah, I know. I should have some gloves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, gloves. For now on, that's what I ain't never doing it like that again. But if I I recommend you all get a uh, a ski mask cap because if it's really hot outside, your head gonna get yeah. burnt up. They got the ones I think with the wetsuits. Yeah, these wetsuits were only, it didn't yeah. have that hood. No, I'm saying they might have some, like, separate. Oh, like, oh, you may man. be able to buy the wetsuit kind. Ah, and I that would have yeah. came in handy because water's going to get yeah. everywhere. And the sun will still tear you up out there. It'd it be cold, <clears throat> but this sun will still burn you. Yeah. Uh, on the way there, we stopped. We saw whales. We saw, I didn't know there was two different types of dolphins or well, there's several types of dolphins, yeah. but we saw two different types of dolphins. One of the, the this huge dolphin looked like a, we thought it was a shark, mm -hmm. but it was a school of them. Is it, is it school of dolphins? They fish, right? I think so. School, whatever. Um, yeah, school. And then we saw some more dolphins, and then we saw a whale. Man, this whale came up, mm -hmm. and the the guide, he he's like 100 yards in front of us, and he puts up his hand. Well, well, stay back. Well, well, you know, to get you together. The well goes down. I mean, you could barely see it. The next time that thing came up, he might have been 10 yards nah. next to us. Mm -hmm. We like, oh, and we on this, on the jet <laughs> ski, and we just floating in the water, just like, oh. So he it dove down, and nah. it might have showed up 50 yards away from us, though. It didn't, it didn't nah. come up where we were. Uh, got to the island. We uh and on the on the island they have like this tunnel that you jump off into the water and you swim through the tunnel come out on the other side get back on your jet ski yeah. we did that Tony Baker gets off this first. ain't no man made tunnel oh no no this no no a, this yeah real life. the the water come in a cave so it's, it's like a, a cave. yeah it's yeah, a cave yeah, yeah. the water the tide comes in and damn near drowns you and then pushes you out. The other, the other side. side. Anybody that survives being out on the water, especially without a life jacket, is it's different. Is a beast. Yeah. I swim like a fish. And I had nah. that life jacket on. I had to lay on my back and just let the water take me because trying to swim, man, mm -hmm. you will be in one place. The, that water will keep you right yeah, there. Or that and water just get, take you where it wants to. Hey, that's what happened. Tony jumped in and he was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> it was his idea to do it. Hey, it. it's his idea. To, he got right back on the jet ski. He was like, I can't. Uh, nah, but that was cool. Then we got off and um, saw Catalina Island, the boo boo part of Catalina Island. Because where we were. Oh, y'all didn't go to the main area. No, we went to this oh. back where the hills have eyes section. Oh, no. Was I it mean, bison back there or was it buffalo? I think it's bison, but no, was not nothing back there. It was all like the workers. They had one cafe. They had one little store Man, selling beach think... towels for thirty dollars. Cause what? you get off the jet ski. Oh, man, when you get off that jet ski and you take that wetsuit off 
and you walking around, man, you are freezing. I kept that thing on. <laughs> you are freezing. Uh, so you, we had to buy towels, thirty dollars a piece for the towels. I'm like, oh, y'all getting this again? There's some more contractors getting my head. <laughs> but uh, it was cool. And then on the way back, it was rough. The waters were just. It was just. It because was rough. One rough. way is with the tide, and the other way is against the tide. I don't know which is which. The water was just rough. I don't know which oh. way the tide was. It was just more wavy. Oh yeah. Everything. After it all, the next day, man, it was like I lift weights, a full body workout. Mm-hmm. I went all out like a CrossFit type of. My traps were hurting. My my. Uh, Lats were hurting. Legs uh, hands were like clutched. I mean, woo! It was a workout. I would, re- I recommend it, but it ain't no um, walk in the park. Walk in the park type <laughs> adventure. This yeah. is this is serious. I I couldn't serious look. shit. And don't go, don't do it with you and your girl on the back because. Yeah, you if you riding a jet ski like that so and you trying to hold on to somebody, <clears throat> it ain't gonna happen. Uh, one of the couples fell off in the mi- you couldn't see no land, man, and they fell off in the middle of the ocean. You couldn't see down no in the feet, water. No feet ain't touching no bottom of you nothing. You can't see. They <laughs> fell. I was like, goose jumped over. <laughs> they fell. I kept going. You yeah. say, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the scariest place to be. Especially, man, it's scary. Look, I seen. I couldn't imagine being out there seeing Woo. a whale. Like I was, we were on our way to Catalina one time. So they got these uh, ships. They ain't ships. They big ass boats. They go back and forth. Yep, and take cargo. people over at the mm-hmm. little uh, tr- whatever you call it, ferry or whatever. Um, and it, that, that mean them boats ain't small. They pretty good size. Yep. And I'm standing there, and I'm in the back, like against the rail. And I think I'm talking to Angel. And I turn around and look, and there's a enormous whale that pops up beside the boat. And I hear it before I see it. I hear, <laughs> like he just came mm-hmm. up and exhaled. And I turn around. Everybody's like, "Oh!" And everybody goes to that side. Scared the shit out of me because I didn't see him first. Yeah. And when I see, and his body was rolling like it was so big, mm. and I was like, "As big?" As, I didn't feel safe on the boat. Yeah. Because he was so big, I couldn't imagine being on a goddamn jet ski. Woo. But that water, people think, look, swimming in the ocean ain't nothing like swimming in the uh, uh-uh. pool or nothing. The water, literally, like the waves, make you realize you have control of nothing. Yep. They remind you that you are nothing. Yep. <laughs> like the waves out there, especially when it's windy. I wonder if the night and day has something to do with how, because every time I'm near water in the morning, near the ocean, the morning is always calm. Mm-hmm. Not, the night is always calm. Mm-hmm. Usually when it picks up, it picks up during the day, like the waves and stuff. I ain't no telling, but man. Anyway. You, if you do it, it's, oh, and if you do it, say you get to Catalina Island and you like, man, I'm riding this ferry back. I'm not taking this jet ski back. They charge you $1,000 to ship it back, to get it back yeah. to Catalina, to get it back to Long Beach. Yeah, you part of the reason. So it's like, hey, we got to get this thing back yeah. and you ain't riding it? <laughs> so they probably put it on the ferry and yeah, ride it back. Yeah, they it up on the ferry. Or they ride it back themselves. I don't, I'm not sure, but. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't. You they probably sign gotta up. do the ride the ferry over and ride it back. Yep. And it was uh, like three, three, four hundred dollars to do it. So Goose was out there riding jet skis. Me and Angel got invited by Nissan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big money. See, I ain't get paid to do this. I paid money. We didn't get paid to do it. It's in the. It's in hopes of. It was a collaboration, mm-hmm. a PR collaboration. I yeah. did it so I could hopefully gain some type of thing on the mm. brand side of things. But anyway. Sure you did. Uh, let me put my on blast. Anyway, so Nissan invited me and Angel up to San Francisco uh-huh. uh, because they got they, the car's already out of thing. Anyway, they released the new Nissan Z. Yes, they're one of their iconic sports cars. And so basically we they flew us up, put us in a hotel. There was a group of influencers and basically we drove it back from uh, San Francisco. We had one stop overnight. That was on Friday. We 
started out Saturday morning, had a stop on Saturday afternoon, and then Sunday morning continued on, just drove it to the house. That little damn thing is fast. I was just but, about to ask you, how did you feel in it? Because I saw it, and I'm like, tank, about no, as long it's, as it's uh, called. <laughs> no, it's small, but I was actually comfortable. Oh. Getting in and out is the problem. It's been a long time since I rode in a car. Okay. Because, you know, me, we got trucks. I mean, I got the Mustang and everything, but riding in a modern car, like a sports car like that, mm-hmm. it's, you setting, it feel like you're sitting under the ground. Like it, you, yeah. you in there. That was a sport, sports. But, uh, yeah, it's a yeah. real, real, it's a sports car for real. But that thing is fast. Uh, but it was fun though. We had fun. It was uh, that was actually I probably got COVID from one of the people because I got had to be I had to be on. I had to get it out. There. I had to talk to people, show my personality. You know, try to be rememberable. Hold good conversations with the people for Nissan, even the other influencers and stuff. Um, we did meet a bunch of nice people. But that was part of like me being like, all right, let me. So I'm a car guy, you know. Hey, it's mm. me. I, I do this. I do that. But it was fun though. That was my, it was my first time being in San Francisco. But the spot we stopped at, um, there I can't remember the name of that place we stopped at. But it it was a neat little hotel, right? Mm. It was. Uh, it looked like old. It like had carpet. It had little sconce lights, fireplaces. It almost looked like your granny's house if she was rich. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Old gas like, yeah, like really old yeah. looking, but like cozy. It was like extremely cozy. But they had a tasting. They had a bunch of like whiskey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I did that because y'all was complaining that Tank always cut me off, so I just wanted to cut him off right fast. Go oh, ahead. Come, go, the, don't you go, ahead. Yo, go ahead and continue. Who complained they, about They ate sconches and drinks. Y'all see, I cut them off. I, Do I be cutting you out? Yeah, man. You Does it bother you? No, it don't bother me. I'm just getting you back for the people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hold up, hold up. I, I ain't no people complaining about that. It don't bother you? No. Fuck what you got to say. <laughs> he talking to the yours. camera. I'm talking to y'all. For y'all that's listening. For everybody listening. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody that said I be cutting Goose off, <laughs> Goose don't care, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Told so, y'all I was gonna stand up for myself. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> nah, I don't be doing it on purpose. I be getting excited about our conversation. Okay. And a lot of times I think you be done. And when I start talking, they be like, he didn't finish. <laughs> I told y'all. Come on. What you tell them? I told I be in the comments now. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna oh, stick up oh, for he myself. Be in the comments. Yeah. 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 Your opinion. Yeah. Man, that's that's what I got to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we stopped at this spot. <laughs> he said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, y'all see it now. I cut them off. Go ahead. Man. Uh, anyway, so I've been. I th- all right, did I cut you off this episode? Or well, you don't be caring, so it don't don't even know. Hey. Yeah, shut the hell up. <laughs> That's what's that third or fourth time? Kiss yeah. my ass. Um, <laughs> so we stopped anyway. This place had a taste, uh, some good uh, bourbons and stuff and whiskeys. Oh, cool. So uh, they and we also went to eat. However, this spot they had a really dope pre mixed. Uh, they had a Manhattan, mm-hmm. like bourbon whiskey. They had a uh, old fashioned. These are pre mix. Pre mix. Now that's crazy. If dope. It, if it was good, it was dope. I God. had, I think, four. Goodness gracious. So, picked you up. Oh, uh, look at that! No <laughs> surprise. <laughs> picked you up a bottle of this. This is a Rod and Hammer's old fashioned. It's literally. You grab the glass, you put some ice with it, and that's an old fashioned, and it's good. And y- y'all see why I 70, put up seventy proof. This is why I put up with him cutting me off. Let me get that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. I as soon as I tasted it, I asked her. I said, "Did you mix this?" She said, "No, it comes like oh, that." I ready the to bottle. drink. I said, "Oh, I'm getting this for goose because <laughs> the, the they had so I had the rod. That's rod and hammers uh, mm-hmm. for y'all is asking and uh, want to know." And then, so Rod and Hammers also has um, like a bourbon or whiskey, and I got that too. It's good. They got a good bourbon. That's my first time. I ain't never heard of Rod and Hammers. Me neither. But it was good. Never seen. That's a nice bottle too. Yeah, it's good though. It's really good. But so anyway, we continued on from uh, that spot. I uh, can't remember exactly where it was in between. I wanted to make Goose uncomfortable because he don't be accepting gifts that often. He, he be some type of way. You know, me- Men can exchange gifts. I thought about my boy when I seen that. I said, you know what? Now nah, hell with him. I'm going to get that punk ass n- his gift Aww. and he going to enjoy it. I <laughs> am, <said>. man. Aww. <laughs> 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 oh, 
that, that's what's happening. No, nah, no, nah, for I'm real. I, I, it's, it's a good one. I was like, I can't. This ain't something I can go back and just talk about and yeah. not have some examples of. They may have it, in, you know, here in L.A. I don't know. But I've it's, never uh, seen it. Me either. I've never heard of it or yeah. seen it. But uh, it's good. It's a good one. Okay. Anyway, so we continued on to L.A. But it was a good experience, though. That little car is 400 horsepower, and it weighs nothing. That thing was 400 horsepower? That little big car got 400 horsepower. That's the problem with these. A lot uh, of people think you need five, 600 horsepower in a car. When you have 400 horsepower with no weight, that's what I'm saying. think about a motorcycles. Two-seater? Motorcycles be having 150 horsepower. <laughs> but Flying. They're out, they'll outrun any car. Thanks. Um, or they go by CCs. Uh, anyway, so yeah, no, it was a it was a nice little thing. It was it was interesting being around like influences like that that's in the cars. That was eye opening for me. Yeah, talking about influences. So this was um, a. Um, and make sure you take it home. Don't leave it here because you need to drink it. Oh yeah, we be I'm recording in the morning, y'all. That's why we don't be in here drinking. <laughs> I'm gonna drink it today. I'm gonna take it a little. If it's ready, it yeah. Cube ice, man. I'm gonna handle that. Uh, this was a opportunity for you to create more opportunities yes. so that you can get more brand deals. Absolutely. Ah, and how has that been working, like brand deals? And, <laughs> you know, let's talk about it. <laughs> um, I can't say who. Yep. I can't say what, but let's just say I was. Uh, I had an experience <clears throat> recently, and uh, it really pissed me off. And mm-hmm. it opened my eyes and realizing I need to take uh, this career more so into my own hands, even more than what I already have. Yeah. Stop relying on people that are put in certain positions to do things for me. Yeah. In fact, there's a good chance I need to sever those relationships. Mm. That's where I'm at. Okay. Um. I'll leave it at that because I know if Angel was here, she would tell me don't give too much detail on certain things. Well, with you saying but it that, pissed me off though. It wasn't good. My bad. Go ahead. With you saying that, I'm I'm on the same page of uh, taking things into my own hands as well. So my wife, she done lost a job and then replaced her Man. income with TikTok. Like, Man, oh, let's take a minute to near. give. Man, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Give her her flowers. Y'all, did, God dang. y'all saw them cut me off, right? You yep. see, I stopped. Yeah. Okay. I was, I'm excited for my home girl. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm yes. sorry. Go ahead. That's yes. like, God dang, Mel is killing So, me. yeah, she is. Uh, with the TikTok situation and uh, YouTube, um, her on Jenny Juice, I mean, she's blossoming to... To a beautiful of fly. Yeah, I'm very proud of her. But it also I'm proud of her. helps. It also shows me that I could be doing a lot more, mm-hmm. and I need to start um, taking more control and taking social media more serious. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, I need to take some headshots. I need to take some little some improv classes. I need to do uh, involve you all more. In my day to day life, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I really want to get fit. I want. I don't want to be a bodybuilder because the the diet restrictions yeah. be crazy. But I want to look is, like one. You, you know, what you I'm can't. It's hard to maintain. You don't like to maintain that. Oh a yeah, lot, yeah, a lot yeah. of it's unhealthy. Like bodybuilders, like competition and stuff. A lot of that to yeah. maintain it is unhealthy because they don't even stay in that shape. No, year round they fast and then they mm-hmm. um, what is it? What they call it? Of bulk, they bulk oh, yeah. up and then they yeah. trim down, bulk up, trim down. This is my cousin did he because doing that, like you said, is it ain't really man. You know what? <clears throat> I had a coach, and he was telling me to eat a certain amount of food for a week. I was like, bro, I ain't take, I ain't shit it yet. Mm-hmm. Usually, I should, every day, good ones. <laughs> <laughs> said good ones. good ones and I ain't shit it all week and he was like man take these digestive pills and it's gonna help you digest the food so I was like hold up mm-hmm. all this working out I'm doing is not helping me digest he was like man this is what this coach told me y'all this, this is not what I said uh, uh, bodybuilding body? coach oh bodybuilding okay yeah. 
He was like, man, your body is not designed to take in all this food and all this protein. These pills are here to help your body digest the food. So I was like, oh, so I'm doing some, I'm really doing some unnatural shit mm-hmm. to my body, making me feel this way. After that, and y'all know I be in my head. I'm like, oh, this ain't for me then. Right. I'm not about to be eating six, six meals a day, pounds of meat a day, mm-hmm. and working out twice a day, and my body won't digest, won't, yeah, digest the food, even though I'm still working out. I got to take these yeah. pills to do it. Oh, hell no. Usually nah. I get more regular when I'm working out. And that's what I was yeah. like. I'm like, oh, I'm working out and I'm doing more sets, more heavier weight. Mm-hmm. Oh, my body, I'm like, hey, man, flush it and get it out. Yeah. Nah. It, give me more and get this out. Yeah. <laughs> two days, two days after not eating like that, your boy was back to normal. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is the way I'm supposed to feel. So, mm-hmm. uh, yep. But just that journey of me trying to be healthy with my kids and doing more family situations and just taking y'all on the journey of uh, of my life could help out with brand deals. And hopefully I uh, find a situation that um, an entity that helps push me um, with equality. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> no, I think, uh, yeah. An no, uh, entity that takes me serious and promotes yeah. me. Yeah, um, I think it'll happen. With intent. Yeah, I think it'll happen just with you, like you said, putting, uh, doing, like showing people more of you, like your personal life, even yep. if it ain't your personal life, just being in front of the camera more and doing more mm-hmm. and then finding something that you're passionate about. That's where I'm trying to take ter- turn my passions because I'm no expert by any means because yep. I'm trying to work on the shit too, but turn my passions into content. Yeah. That's why I'm like working on the car thing. I'm trying to figure out how that is going to look and how it's going to be entertaining for somebody to actually watch mm-hmm. and not just me sitting there talking about a goddamn, you know what I'm saying, car. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's hard to let people see stuff out of my eyes, but I can let them understand why I see things the way I do. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I'm trying to turn it into a way that helps people. Okay. So hopefully that'll, you know, switch it up. Um, I ain't gonna go back into the bodybuilding diet thing, but yeah, it's, it's interesting that after I learned a lot from that on that side of things. My cousin, he was a bodybuilder. He did competitions and stuff like, and uh, he was just talking about how unhealthy it is like to get there and to be there for the certain amount of weeks mm-hmm. before and after the competition. Because after the competition, you got to wean yourself back into being normal. You can't just go and start eating yeah. the way you want to. But anyway, moving on. Yeah, we both oh, tra- brand deals. Direct. Oh, go ahead. Brand deals. But anyway, what'd you say? No, no, no. What was the next one? <clears throat> um, you said COVID. We did. Let me talk about the scammers real quick. Tenfold. So as as a lot of y'all know, uh Angel got into a car accident. Uh mm-hmm. she's good. Car is uh I don't know, the adjuster actually came this morning. I that's who I had to go meet with before this. Um so he looked at it, me and him talked a little bit. But what was crazy is the I know a lot of y'all probably saw Angel po- did a post about these scammers that be vultures out here in California mm-hmm. in traffic. Dang. Like I know ne- I would have never imagined if I hadn't, if I was in that situation, it would have blew my mind that people literally ride around looking for wrecks, trying to scam people. Tow trucks pulled up. It's almost like being on the internet and you click on the wrong site and a bunch of bots and stuff come and just swarm mm. you. It was like tow trucks showed up. The way they scam you, if you didn't call that tow truck, they will tow your vehicle and basically have it somewhere or even if you're with them they'll have it somewhere and won't get it off the truck until you pay them a crazy amount of money yep which that to me that's just gonna turn into uh i mean that's gonna turn into jail for me yep. um because i'm not paying you nothing and my truck is coming up off of that goddamn truck anyway you got the tow truck people you got the fake lawyers and attorneys mm-hmm. scammy scammer witnesses one dude was uh that he uh said he you know his tesla Oh, my friend has a Tesla and you know, he you know, they record video, this, that, and the other. 
Um, this is what, you know, we can give you the video. So Angel's like, yeah, you know, so she gives us his number. Next thing you know, Angel's getting phone calls like crazy. You know, Angel has an Infinity QX80. Fake Infinity people are calling. Like, yes, uh, this is Infinity and the sensors. We saw that your sensors in your vehicle went off. No, no airbag deployed. Nothing went off. There was nothing sent to. First of all, they don't even have Angel's number. They have my number. Mm. So if it there's some people call pretending to be Infinity saying, you know, we can send a tow truck to you. We're making sure you're okay. Do you want to do this, this, that? All of this happened within an hour of her getting into a collision or hitting an accident or they hit her or whatever. I'm like, this it shit is insane. People out here hungry, man. I'm telling you. I mean, literally <laughs> insane. What I would suggest everybody do, I'm going to get one and I'm going to tell y'all which one to get. I'm going to get a dash cam. Mm to record everything and you get in you press record and it'll just record as you driving if mm-hmm. something happens you have that as evidence it's literally that's what they for there's a dash cam they got them for front and rear i uh know uh, the dude that used to work on my mustang i don't know if i told this on here or not he got into an accident he actually t-boned an amazon driver that ran a stoplight oh snap stop sign or stoplight i'm not sure luckily for him normally he would be in the wrong and yep. people could say, no, he ran the lighter stop sign. No, I ran it. But luckily for him, this intersection just happened to be under surveillance. Ah, oh, cool. The only down part about that is he has a 66 Buick Skylark Psh. that's a monster. Like, he literally custom did this entire car. Like, that's the one he hit him with? Yeah. Dang. So he built, he did the, he had the engine build, he did everything, but he installed the engine, transmission, anybody where he redid this thing himself he can't send this to nobody and working on but work on it because he did does it all himself anyway they ended up i think it was like thirty seven thousand dollars worth of damage like he, he sent me like pictures of the wreck after the wreck he sent me pictures of like piece by piece of him repairing that was over a year ago he's still repairing his car but luckily for him that intersection was under surveillance ah. and i'm like that's what I'm about to get for a vehicle. I'm going to get one and just transfer it, you know, and get one for Angel mm-hmm. to because people will be out here crooked. Yeah. And if you're going to hit a vehicle or have a vehicle hit you, it should be an Amazon vehicle. Oh, yeah, because they. Oh, yeah, they, I know Amazon they covered everything for yeah. that. Crazy. Hey, I need I need to get one for mail, too. But. I think we at time. You got anything else you want to get it? You want to uh, cover? <laughs> oh, what? let me show y'all, man. Look here. <clears throat> oh, yeah. We God dang. How we I got. It? I don't know how we missed it, but you cut me off again. Let me man, let me promote ass, some goose. shit. Uh, on the rep merch is back on the website, and now the website is officially underreppedmerch.com. All right, makes more sense that way. All right, so that'll be in the description below. But we have. These new crew neck sweaters uh, on the site, underrepped, but always repping. You did. All right? Go and copy one. You can catch me uh, on YouTube, Building with Goose, uh, IG, uh, Goose B, G O O L Z B Y. And um, you can catch my wife at Underreported on YouTube as well. I'm going to edit all that out. Anyway, fam, y'all can find me on Instagram at Marcus A. <laughs> Facebook, Marcus A. on the book, TikTok at Tank Don't Talk. Y'all can find my beard and body butter called Man Shit. You can go to M A N S H Y T dot com and check it out. And I talked to Patreon yesterday, uh, Monday, so y'all know what I'm working on. Uh, anyway, fam, sorry, Patreon. Y'all didn't get this live. I tried, but it didn't work. Um, Holla back at y'all next time. Y'all have a good one, fam.